Perhaps no one in the pro-life movement is a more vocal advocate for life, heading right into the lion's den and changing culture in America from the inside out than our first speaker this morning. Kristen Hawkins. <laughs> is a Christian wife, mother, grassroots activist, author, speaker, and of course, human rights advocate. As the president of Students for Life of America, Kristen has seen a small organization that she started in 2006 grow from a few dozen student groups scattered all around the country to now a coordinated national team serving more than 1,200 Students for Life chapters in all 50 states. Under her leadership, Students for Life exists to abolish abortion by transforming our culture through recruiting, training, and mobilizing this pro-life generation who are direct targets of today's abortion industry. A frequent speaker and media analyst, Kristen's expertise includes abortion, feminism, disability advocacy, and healthcare as she navigates the social conditions and public policy that impacts the human rights issues of our day. A published author, Kristen wrote her book, Courageous, Students Abolishing Abortion in This Lifetime. She's been featured on Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, The Today Show, CBS, ABC, HBO, and more, and has received the title, One of the Four Worst Anti-Abortion Misinformers by Media Matters. It's a title of which she is very, very proud. As you all know, Kristen regularly speaks on college campuses like Yale, Harvard, Dartmouth, Berkeley, and more, and how many of you have seen her viral TikTok and Instagram videos on campus? Do me a favor, and you can follow along, pull out your phone and write down her Instagram handle of her family traveling the country at Kristen, or at Hawkins History Hunters with her amazing family as they continue to learn more about American culture and history. And join me in welcoming to the stage SFLA President Kristen Hawkins. before we got to the hard work, everyone. How many of you are so excited to be here today to learn and strategize for how we are gonna go home this year and get to that point where we see abortion abolished in our nation? I feel so deeply honored to be with each of you today. It feels especially great to be here right now. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, though, we will mourn what would have been, what would have been the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade and the 63 million lives that have been taken from our generation. But today, after decades of hard work and sacrifice, we celebrate the historic moment of this month. The first January in five decades in America where we are finally free of the dumpster fire that was Roe v. Wade. <laughs> Yesterday morning, as I was reflecting upon this post-Roe moment our movement now faces, a moment of great triumph, of challenge and opportunity, I couldn't help but think of another important January victory in our collective American history which is today called and known as the Battle of the Bulge, as it was the final victory needed to bring about the end of one of the greatest horrors we've ever seen in our world, the end of the Second World War, Nazism, the Holocaust. Think about it. Just 28 years before seven cowardly men in black robes decided that babies didn't deserve the same right to life as they did, Hundreds of thousands of young, brave men in 1945 laid down their lives so that those same babies 
could be born and live in freedom and safety for generations to come. Make no mistake about it. The Battle of the Bulge wasn't just another fight in a long list of hellish fights during World War II. After the Allied victory on the beaches of Normandy, the Nazis actually saw it as their last real chance to turn the tide before their defeat. That's why Hitler himself planned the attack. And it's why the Nazis held nothing back from this winter fight. It was an all-out, merciless assault, not just on the Americans serving in the trenches. The Nazis attacked our soldiers off the battlefield, too, even if they surrendered. They threatened the lives of innocent families who were hiding in their homes. They even targeted churches. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? All told, Hitler unleashed more than 500,000 German soldiers, more than 1,400 tanks, more than 1,000 warplanes to win this battle. There's only one way to describe that kind of military might, unstoppable. And it might have been, except for the courage and the commitment of American heroes. Those young men who were given one mission, hold the line, to never give in, to keep fighting till the very end. And despite that, the fact that more American men died in the Battle of the Bulge than on both sides of the fields at Gettysburg, they fulfilled their mission. And because of them, good triumphed over evil. Even now, it's a reminder in the ultimate battle, it's good, not evil, that's unstoppable in the end. Friends, you don't need me to point out the similarities to today. The pro-life movement has had some big wins in the last five decades over this war against the violence and exploitation of abortion. Just think about one of our latest wins when the Trump-Pence administration, they appointed Amy Coney Barrett, a badass Catholic pro-life soccer mom to the Supreme Court. And of course, that sets the stage for the historic phrase I had the honor to read before the world last summer. The Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey are overruled. <laughs> Outside, though, of law and politics, the pro-life movement has seen even more victories from the battles we have fought in the last five decades. In our communities and in our campuses, we've helped millions of people open their eyes to the violence. We've built an entire social safety net of thousands of pregnancy centers and maternity homes, ensuring no woman stands alone during her pregnancy or after the birth of her child. At Students for Life, that's meant growing our army of love and passionate activists and pro-life first voters. Because of you, We've transformed our movement as we've now trained more than 160,000 young people and served more than 1,400 pro-life groups in all 50 states. You all know you are the real rock stars in this room today. Let's be clear with the lies and the fear-mongering the abortion industry is spreading since Roe's reversal with the threats and the actions of violence and discrimination you all face, ours is not an easy mission. It is hard work we engage in. But just like 78 years ago, the evil forces that we face, they're still refusing to go down without a fight. In fact, since May, we've already gotten a glimpse of what abortion extremists are willing to do. We've watched terrorist groups like Jane's Revenge firebomb hundreds of pregnancy resource centers and churches. They even threatened to shoot up a recent Students for Life event in Omaha. We've seen the Supreme Court justices threatened and their families harassed, not unlike what a lot of you here face yourselves. We've started to see other, more subtle, 
and even more dangerous strategies for advancing their culture of death. That includes radically expanding access to chemical abortion pills. And these drugs aren't just deadly for preborn children with beating hearts and growing tiny bodies. These are dangerous for moms who carry these babies. And the, they risk their own injury, infertility, and death. And they're harmful for our public water, our fish, our animal life, as chemically tainted blood, tissue, and the broken bodies of babies are being flushed into our waterways. Thanks to President Biden's weaponization of the once admired Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, the next time you walk into a CVS or a Walgreens to get some cold medicine or women to get some tampons, because only women have uteruses, <laughs> or maybe you'll be a good husband. But. Thank you, honey. The abuser, the abuser could be standing in front of you, picking up the pills to force feed his next victim. Or she, the scared, confused young woman, could be standing behind you, seconds away from ingesting a pill in the parking lot that will end the beating heart of her child, killing him or her, and maybe even her in the process. But they aren't going to stop there. They know where they want this viral spread of chemical abortion pills to go. Next, our pharmacies will be told not that they may carry these pills, but that they must distribute them. And then they will be told they must be over-the-counter and taxpayer-funded. I am so sorry that I have to paint such a dark picture at the very beginning of our day. But you, the pro-life generation, deserve to know the full truth of what we're up against. Because it will be in the days and weeks that come next that will define our, dec our country for decades to come. And there's no doubt about it. Each and every one of us are going to face a choice. Just like in 1945, when brave young men in the American military had to make a choice between retreating from the overwhelming strength of the Nazi army or holding the line. Or in 1973, when the original pro-life gen had a choice between accepting abortion that had become a decided matter or holding the line and chipping away at that abomination for nearly half a century. And today, we face the same sort of choice today, between accepting the dangerous idea that we have made some progress, but now it's time to settle down and stop our fighting, become normal people who stop talking about abortion, or holding the line. I know you know it won't be easy, but I know you can do this. And I'll be standing right beside you the entire time. In fact, our entire team at Students for Life and Students for Life Action will always be there because no pro-life student stands alone. That's why. That's why I'm honored to announce today in front of our board who doesn't even know this, that Students for Life is launching our most aggressive campaign yet, a five-year plan to establish a pro-life presence on every four-year college campus in America, all 2,675 of them in five years. <laughs> Go to postrogeneration.com. Go to postroadgeneration.com right now and sign up if you haven't started a Students for Life group yet because we need you at your school. And then do me a favor and go to thisischemicalabortion.com. Learn everything you can about the dangers of chemical abortion pills, which are now the leading cause of death of preborn children in our nation. And while you're at your phones, I got one more thing for you. Go to your calendar and mark down the date, Saturday, June 24th. And make sure you put a note in there, be at the Lincoln Memorial. 
We have a very special event that we'll be announcing soon to be there to honor the anniversary, the first anniversary of the Dobbs decision when Roe v. Wade was thrown into the ash heap of history, honoring the original pro-life gen, honoring the sacrifices for 49 years of the pro-life movement, and laying out our vision of where we go next. I hope you can make it. It's on my calendar. Thanks to you, pro-life Jen, there is real momentum on behalf of moms and babies across all of our land. Since June, tens of thousands of babies have been spared. And in a few short weeks, those first babies will soon be born. Somebody send formula and diapers down to Texas stat. Next, we'll be blamed for a diaper shortage. It'll be all of our fault. <laughs> and this momentum that we have has left the abortion lobby scared. As we've seen, though, this fear has made them more dangerous than ever. In fact, I think the opposition we can feel can be, we can be felt just as unstoppable and overwhelming as the Nazi army war machine must have seemed 78 years ago to those hundreds of thousands of American men. But I agree with what General Eisenhower said, what his challenge to those young men were. The present situation is to be regarded as one of opportunity for us and not of disaster. With Roe v. Wade gone, America has a true chance to become the land of the free, the free to be born. But now, but now, pro-life Jen, it's your responsibility. It's our privilege to br bring the brave, to be unstoppable, to see good triumph over evil, and to end the devastation of abortion in our land forever. Thank you. Let's give it up one more time for Kristen Hawkins.